May God be lifted in your life and may you be lifted through and in God. Welcome to Be Lifted. Shout hallelujah. Let's have a seat. God bless you. Good morning to all of you in Jesus' name. Now, if you are not used to listening to Jews' messages, I want to appeal to you uh, to listen to this one very carefully. Uh, if I prostrate for you now to beg you, you won't like it. But I want to beg you <laughs> to listen carefully to this message. Uh, I want to give you one of the biggest assistance you can get as a young So this is why I said listen very, very carefully. If you are following me, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Tell somebody I will listen carefully. Tell the person, don't disturb me. Amen. Listen. I have come from a very poor home. So poor, we fight on the dining table over Eba. Cassava. Money hot. Maniot is cassava. That's scientific name, so don't worry. It was that bad. I sat down and studied the poverty that I saw in the family. And I made a decision that come what may, I do not want to experience that poverty. But it's not just a decision by mouth. There are prayers to pray. There are prayers of escape. And therefore, I'm prophesying on the life of somebody here today that what will happen in your life today will change your family history. And so God has brought me to where I am now. As I'm talking to you now, sometimes... I may dress as if I'm a hunter. Sometimes you may not even like Joe's dressing. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I may look to you like a poor man sometimes. But the secret is, I'm one of the richest men on the surface of this earth. <laughs> you don't understand. I will explain. <laughs> I'm not I've been to Palm or James. Fine. Uh, if I stand up on that pulpit at Palm of King James, and I said, All you, my children who have come to this program, how many of you liked Jew? You say, I do. I say, hey, I don't have Shetu. What is going to happen? How many shares will I get? <laughs> I said, I'm sorry. As I'm talking to you, I'm not happy. My shoes are bad. If I say that at the altar at Palm Senior, what will happen? The next question is, what size are? What size are? That's the next question I'm going to ask. And by the time they bring shoes to Press City, there will be nowhere to go. If I stand there and say, okay, uh, I have nowhere to sleep tonight. Many people will vacate their bedroom and say, sleep on this bed so that the bed can collect fire. And I can do that in over 80 countries of the world. Amen. So that makes me one of the richest men on earth. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Riches is not when you pack money in your pocket. Riches is to get what you want when you want it. That's all. You want to eat, you can eat. Not you seek for it before you eat it. So listen very, very carefully. We're going to pray some very strange prayers here today. But if you pray them from your heart, you see what will happen. In our days, prayer didn't used to be a Greek like it is now. We pray plenty of agricultural prayer. You know they are Greek chicken. 
big, fat, but it's not sweet, it's not delicious. But those rugged, bushy chicken, <laughs> those ones that are eating sand and eating worms all over, their taste is better than their Greek one. In those days, when we were younger, when prayers get to a level, we'll remove our shirt and put it down. So we must get to somewhere. Praise the Lord. What am I talking to you about? I'm explaining to you. My topic is the devils that fought your daddy. What did I say? The devils that fought your daddy. Fact number one. Fact number one. Whether you believe it or not, whether you like it or not, the devils that fought your daddy will one day fight you. If you don't, if you don't believe, it doesn't matter. If I'm not bothered. You say, I don't believe. By faith, nothing will fight me. Okay, no problem. <laughs> whether you believe it or not, whether you like it or not, fact number one is that the devils that fought your daddy or your mommy will one day fight you. Those devils are just waiting for you to grow up. To the level where you are ripe enough to attack. You can see that when somebody is uh, three years old, there is no breast. So there can be no breast cancer. The devil will wait for the person to grow up and blow up the breast. And if you like, you can go and, you can go and buy breast and a hansa. Or those things that pump the breast up. If the devil is going to attack the breast, he will still attack it. The devils are just waiting for the person to grow, that they will attack. Whether we like it or not, one day you will have to fight your daddy's devils. That fight, if you lose it, you are gone. Fact number two problems can pass from parents to children. You, haven't, you didn't cause the problem, you didn't even know. How they got your mommy pregnant under the trailer. But now you are around. They have impregnated your mommy under the trailer. And now you have been born. You didn't know what you went to do under the trailer when they slept with her. But now you are the baby. You are here. She has caused problem. And it will certainly pass over to the children. Fact number three. Are you following me? Am I too fast for you? <laughs> Fact number three. Many overconfident guys and girls have had to swallow their words when they find themselves walking into their father's footsteps and making exactly the same mistake that their fathers made. They were confident. They were reading the Bible. They were shouting, it's not my lot. It's not my lot. But whether they were shouting, it's not my lot. They just found themselves walking straight into those things. And in spite of their confidence, they've been cut down. I'm praying for somebody here. Every power that wants to program you into a pattern of failure shall die here today. Let your This was 19, 1992. At the age of 37, a lady was eventually able to find somebody to marry. Well, two weeks to the marriage, the man came and said, Sorry, this wedding cannot go on. I said, But why? I said, Because I just discovered that you are too short for me. And they say, short man, devil. Because short people are bad. The lady said, but we've been cutting for two years. Is it now, two weeks to the wedding, that you are recognizing that I'm short? I said, well, that is semantics. That's grammar. I'm not interested. That's all. And the man walked away. That was a failure of the first attempt at marriage. At 39, 
she found somebody else. Two weeks again to the same wedding. Please listen to me carefully. Two weeks again to the same wedding. At Adekule bus stop there, by one, the front of one chemist, they used to call cosmopolitan chemist. A vehicle ran into the man. And the man died on the spot. That was the end of the second attempt at marriage. The third attempt, they tried. They even got to church. They got to church. Yeah. And you know, those of you who are pastors here, you know, during weddings, there are portions in the wedding book. When you read it, you don't want to look up too much. You want to be, you want to read it very quickly and run away. That portion is, if there is anyone here who has any reason why these two should not be joining holy matrimony, say so now or keep quiet forever. Most pastors don't want to look up when they read that one. But the rule is that once somebody objects, you can't go on. You have to listen to the objection. They got there and this man said, is there anyone here who has any reason why this should not be joined only matrimony? Let him say so now or keep quiet forever. There was a hand at the back. It was a lady. The lady came with one baby at the back, also dragging another boy. And they found their way to the pulpit. Say, yes, lady, what's your complaint? Say, this man that you are trying to marry here, sir, is my husband. We got married in England. This is the wedding certificate. And this, say, so pastor, pastor, look at the faces of these two children and look at the face of the man. And the pastor looked at the one at the back. Look at them and say, yes, they look like photocopy. That was the end again of the third attempt at marriage. That was what brought her to the mountain of fire. Before then, she goes to society church. We started praying. And let's say, son, ask her to go and bring our father and our mother. I said, sister, bring your father and your mother. I said, father, I don't know any father. I only know my mother. So okay, bring mama here. Brought the mother here. I said, mommy, why is your husband? I said, pastor, ask her to go out. So we sent her out. I said, why is your father? I said, I don't, see, I don't know. I don't know. I said, because that night, three men slept with me. So I don't really know. Who is who? And all three men are dead. Say, so, did you ever marry anybody? Say, so, no. No, no marriage. Say, so, so that she's never married anybody. And the last time you see, the problem has passed from mother to daughter. I'm praying for somebody here. Every father to son problem, every mother to daughter problem. In the life of anyone standing here this morning. Die! In the name of Jesus. Sit down. Listen very carefully to these two scriptures. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. If you will pray well today, you find that after this prayer meeting, you start feeling lighter. That lightness you are feeling <laughs> means that certain things have gone. Those things making you sluggish career wise, making you sluggish spiritually, making you sluggish in the journey of your destiny. In First Timothy chapter 6, verse 12, if I dare say yes. He says, what? What did he ask me to do? Fight! Fight! He said, fight! Fight! 
fight his fight. So fight the good fight of faith. That is a fight to fight, beloved. That is a fight to fight. Fight the good fight of faith. The Bible is a military book. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Well unto thou art called, and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. So faith is a is a fight. This prayer is a fight. So you must fight. You must fight to possess your possession. You must fight to prevent the evil power of your father's house from swallowing you. You must fight. To gain your promised land, you must fight to overcome the darkness in this world. You must fight to remain unpolluted in this terrible world in which we find ourselves. And you will succeed. Because the Bible says, They shall fight against you, but they shall not prevail. It didn't say, It didn't say those devils and your father that will not fight. There will be a fight. But it says, They shall not prevail. Now, in the book of Lamentations, you, have, you find Lamentations after Jeremiah. Lamentations chapter 5, verse 7. I'm sure the Lord has sent me here for somebody today. And uh, that person will receive his or her in the name of Jesus. Lamentations 5, 7. If you are there to say yes. So if I are there, okay, read it there. What does it say? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see the problem? Our fathers have sinned. <laughs> they are not, but we are now the ones bearing their iniquities. Number one is you must fight. Number two, this is the major devil you need to fight. If you must fulfill your destiny, if you must do what God wants you to do. You know, whereas as a song we sing very popularly in MFN, I am born to win. I am born to win. I am born to win. Being lost and found. Turn upside down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be cast aside. I'm being despised. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> but like Daniel in the lion's den, Jonah in the belly of the whale, I'm not alone. So I cannot fail. No, 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 I am born to win. I don't know if you are born to win here. <laughs> Praise the Lord. To be quite honest, born to win is born to fight. Because you do not overcome until you have confronted an opposition. You can't become a winner without fighting any battle. You only overcome through battle. You do not overcome if you have fought no battle. All those, there are no winners who never fought any battle. So, born to win means born to do what? Born to fight, because to win, you need to fight. You need to fight. Born to win is born to fight. Today, we want to deal with possibly the strongest battle you have to fight in your life. If you must be a winner. A man had two children. This man was from a polygamous home. Then the father married a young woman. The, the last wife of the father, I think it was the 11th wife. The 11th wife. The eleventh wife was a young girl, very beautiful girl. I don't know why she married the old man. This man was the firstborn in that polygamous home. Now found his father marrying a beautiful wife as number eleven. Of course, one day that the father uh, has gone to the farm, he went and raped the young wife. As he raped the young woman, the young woman said, "This thing you are doing, your children will never prosper." I said, hey, shut up, shut up, shut up. Eventually, he got married too. This man who raped his father's wife got married, had two children, but to his amazement, every night, when they grew up, every night, he'll be hearing strange noises in the room. 
One day when he got into the room, he found them sleeping with each other. His daughter and his son were sleeping with each other. Eventually, the son got the daughter pregnant. They didn't want to tell their father. They went to try and abort it. And they went to a quack doctor who did the abortion terribly and the girl died. It was a sorrow that killed the man. The evil seed that he had planted then has now spread over to the children. I'm praying for you. That any evil seed your parents have planted, you will not reap it. Let your amen be loud and clear. You see, I'm trying to explain to you a very complicated topic. I hope I'm making sense to you. Do you understand what I'm saying? Good. Your parentage will determine the battle you fight in life. Your parentage will determine the battle you fight in life. The kind of prayers I'm going to ask you to pray now are the prayers I started praying when I was 10 years old. 10 years old. I, I could see what was happening. 10 years old. Yeah? There was a time we cook in our house. Nobody put tomato inside the soup. Nobody put uh, onion inside the soup. It was just pepper. You don't want to continue like that. From 10, I started praying. I started praying. So someone says, oh, well, uh, you, you think you have time. No. <laughs> no, the earlier you start the prayer, I'm praying to well. The better. They say prevention is better than a cure. So the prayer we're going to pray today is preventive, it's also curative. If the thing has already started manifesting in your life, if for example your father was a polygamist and already you are dating plenty guys, you are becoming a golden eaglet of polygamy like your father. Your parentage will do what? Will determine the battle you fight. If Israel did not go into Egypt, the children of Israel will have no reason to want to cross the Red Sea. It was their fathers who took them to Egypt. Now the children wanted to leave Egypt now. Red Sea is on the way. But who took them there? Their fathers. Your parentage will determine the battle you fight. Abraham in the Bible told a king called Abimelech a lie that his wife was not his wife. Abraham. Because he was afraid that they may kill him. So when you get there, say you are not my wife, say you, my, say you are my sister. And when the king said that the wife was beautiful, he grabbed Sarah. Only God delivered Abraham. Abraham told Abimelech a lie that his wife was not his wife. Forty years later, Isaac, the son of Abraham, told Pharaoh a lie too that his wife was not his wife. Sixty years later, Jacob, the son of that Isaac, colluded with his, his mother to deceive Isaac, the two lies. 80 years later, Laban deceived Jacob. All of them are from the same family. So Jacob. Deceived Jacob. He said, Come and marry a wife. So, if you want to marry this wife, you do slavery for seven years. He did slavery for seven years. At the night, when they should bring the wife to his tent, they brought in the wrong woman. When they said, Ah, this is the wrong woman, I said, eh, Another seven years. That will give you this, the, the right wife. Hundred years later, Jacob was now deceived by all his children who said Joseph had been killed by a wild lion or wild animal. Whereas they were the ones that sold him off. One twenty years later, Reuben was sleeping with his father's wife. One forty years later, Judah of the same family slept with his daughter in law. 
And then many, 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 many years later, Judas, who was from Judah, betrayed Jesus. All of them from the same land. Whether you like it or not, or whether you believe me or not, you will certainly have to fight the devils that fought your father. That's what brought out one of the prayers who prayed MFM. <laughs> that the enemies that pursue my parents and are now pursuing me fall down and die. Many people don't understand the prayer. And this thing that I'm telling you now has no respect for anointing. Say, I'm a pastor. Huh? <laughs> pastor call. <God. laughs> I'm a priest. Priest. I'm a bishop. bishop. What bishop? What are you bishoping? <laughs> no respect. I mean, we're talking about Abraham here, the father of faith. We're talking about Moses here. The man that the Bible says is the clo- he, he, no, no, there is no prophet like Moses. Yet he had to fight this hard battle. Unfortunately, the New Testament was not available to make them know how to tailor their prayers and escape. If you're a very careful reader of the Bible, you find that in the whole of the Old Testament, most of those Old Testament people don't understand how the devil operated. It was not clear to them. Not clear at all. Even when the devil was killing Job's children, Job thought it was God. Said the Lord has given, the Lord has taken. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Whereas the Lord did not take anybody. Did you understand? It was when Jesus came. It was Jesus that began to say, Strong man. Strong man. And when Jesus began to bind demons, it was Jesus that was begin, began to explain, explain to us this things. And when he now died, by that blood that he shed, we now have the power to remove ourselves from any yoke that is crossing over to our lives from our parents. But it was not available to these people. So you and I we are very fortunate that there is a solution. In those days, it, the people were too ignorant to know about solution. A pastor who I sent for deliverance at Presbyterian, he started a church. The first church grew very big. And in that church, he appointed elders, deacons, and all those people. Uh, but he found that the deacons and the elders they, they were getting too powerful, too powerful, too powerful. The, the pastor will take a decision, they will overturn it. The pastor will say, We shall do it like this. Say, no, Pastor, we must we are the elders, we must do it like this. So one day he got tired. He now took the microphone on Sunday and said, Elder so so and so, elder so and so, elder so and so, deacon so and so. From today I disband all of you. You are no longer elders. You are no longer deacons. And one of the elders ran to the front. The, the pastor said, I disband all of you in the name of the Father, the name of the Son, the name of the Holy Spirit. One of the elders ran to the front. He grabbed the microphone. He said, we reconstitute ourselves. In the name of the Father, the name of the Son, the name of the Holy Ghost. There was an open fight in church. And that was the end of that first church. Then he started a second church. No, no I, I don't know what went wrong with him. He found the wife of his driver very beautiful. And he slept with her. And he impregnated the driver's wife. So that was the end of the second church. Then he started a third church. That third church was even more horrible. They went for baptism in a flowing river. And a pregnant woman was with them for baptism. He put the pregnant woman in water. Only God knew what took the pregnant woman away from his hand. And the woman drowned. That was the end of the three churches. That was why somebody recommended go to Mountain of Fire. And he came. I began to question him. Why is your father? He said his father was a pastor. Your father was a pastor. Said, yes. Why is he now? He said, sir, he never succeeded. He slept with the king's wife. He slept with the wife of the king of their town. And the king caught them. Pastor, 
sleeping with the wife of a king. Say your father slept with the wife of a king of your town. Say yes. Then what happened? Say the king caught them. Then what happened? Say the king put a curse that anyone who goes to a church opened by this man is in trouble and we shall burn down the church. And that's how his father stopped pastoring. The problem of that father has now crossed over to this pastor and is affecting him. Close your eyes, beloved. The pass from my father's house. Pursuing my star. Is that the love that you can shut this one? Your voice is not loud enough. That voice is not loud enough. Jesus. But put us at the Nakata. Request upon the Kenya was shelter of us. Something is up already. Something is up already. Yes. Let her go. 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 But see, put her tantana of a Santa. In Jesus' name we pray. Silence. All eyes closed. There's a rope tied to the waist of one sister. And I was asking that power to let her go. Now, let her go. Jesus. Sit down. In some families, nobody lives long to become old. In some families, as I'm talking now, you can't locate anybody who is 70 years old. Some at the age of 40, they die. Some at the age of uh, 50, they die. I remember reading a story about T.D. Jakes. That in their family they die at 40. So when he approached 40, he started praying. And he would have died if not for knowing how to pray. In some family, everybody is a polygamist. So immediately you get to the age where you are having breasts and you can impregnate a woman, the devil show up. When you're a tiny little boy, they leave you alone. They don't bother you. You can't pregnant anybody then. You can't get pregnant. They leave you alone. Immediately you approach, you start your menstruation. Immediately uh, you begin to approach puberty. They just show up. They start battling them. Battling them. And they show up with various ties. Sometimes they will overpraise you. They say, my God, what a beautiful girl. Wow. Just look at how she smiles. Just look at how she walks. Carrie. Angel. <laughs> and you two are rejoicing. Say, you see? It is, it is, it is, whenever I am, I attract attention. Ha! Ah, it is wicked attention. No. The attention is not doing you good. Wherever I am, that's me. You, you, you can envy me for nothing. That's me. Why I am, I tell you, uh, guys gravitate around me. That gravitation. <laughs> it's an evil gravitation, no? And those men gyrating around you, that gyration is a wicked gyration. Ah, hey, hey, I'm, I'm ladies' men. They like me, always flocking after me. Flocking after me. Let me show you my phone. Pia, pia, pia. I have seen various pieces. 
I admire you. I fancy you. I admire you. I fancy you. Facebook, Twitter, I admire you. I fancy you. And you'll be rejoicing. <laughs> you are rejoicing upon zero. In our days, there used to be a haircut. They call it guys follow me. I don't know whether they still do that haircut. Guys follow me haircut. You can as well say demons follow me. In some families, the men are not satisfied by one woman. It's until he gets additional one. It's, they are never even if the woman has ten children, five boys, five girls, he will still go out and get another. And once you find that you are interested in a guy, after three months you just lose interest again. Your interest is another guy. After three months you lose interest again. Ah, the devils have already started fighting you. They've already started the fight. Or you pick one, you, tell, you propose to this lady, that one says yes, you are going around, you propose another one, propose to a third one. The devil of polygamy of your father's house is already after you. It's already after you. And I want you to understand this. They brought a boy to me some years back. I, when I first of all saw him, I cried. I cried. At the age of 13, he has slept with 67 prostitutes. 13. He, she said, help me, man of God. I can't help myself. And before I could say, Jesus is Lord, he has put down his trousers. And I saw his male organ. It was all sores. Sore. All through. I said, ah, this thing is so sore. You are still using it. He said, yes, that's the problem. I'll be using it, it will be paining me, I'll be crying, and I'll still be doing it. When something has gotten to that level, it means you are no longer in charge. There's another power in charge assigned to destroy. I'm praying for somebody here. Any power assigned to destroy your destiny shall destroy themselves. In the name of Jesus, let your heaven be loved. In some families, in some families, they practice incest. Incest. Brothers will be sleeping with the sisters, nephews, coughing, nieces, all of them. They're sleeping with each other. It's incest. In some families, the husband will always sleep with the housemaid or the tea girl or one messenger somewhere, although he's a big man, but will be sleeping around with those small, small people. In some families, it's hereditary diseases. You notice your mother battling asthma. Your father battled asthma. You are battling asthma too. Your father battled hypertension. High blood pressure. You are battling the same thing. You notice that your father, whenever he gets to the point of breakthrough, when he's supposed to go into glory, something goes wrong. They demote him. And you are battling the same thing too. Now already you are battling it. It remains two points for you to make first class. They pull you down. Because your father never made any first class. They always pull him down when he's about to get there. In some families, there is always somebody who is crazy, mad, insanity. And sometimes the insanity is after having a child, after having a baby, the woman just runs mad, becomes crazy, and begins to misbehave. In some family, is acidic poverty. Poverty that is so serious that if you enter into the acid room, you smell the poverty. Now there's a smell of poverty. Smell of poverty. In some families, it's marital delay. This year now, I've been trying to pray for almost eight families who have a minimum of five, five ladies. All of them medical doctors, architects, lawyers, and so on and so forth. But no marriage. No marriage. The parents have been crying and crying and crying. No marriage. In some families, it's lack of favor. They don't just get helpers. Nobody helps them. They can't say, ah, I met somebody who is in the top position who can help me. Never. Nobody helps them. They are in the world floating alone. And this world, you can't make it without a helper. It's not possible. Any good position you get to, somebody must have helped you to get there. You need a helper. But some have no helper. In some families, it's this near success syndrome. 
in some families backwardness always at the back always at the back always at the back when you say first class they're not found there second class they're not found there third class that's what they will be then they we can never find anybody at the front of anything in some families they're always maltreating their wives all wives are beating black and blue some of you are here your father is still beating your mother it's a devil though. If you're not careful, when you become a man too, you will start beating your wife. Unless you subject yourself to deliverance now and cast that devil out of you. Your father is beating your mother and you're already slapping your fiancé. Some families, all the women will always marry bad, bad husband. In some families, all the men will always marry witches. In some families, all the husbands die prematurely, die at a young age. In some families, broken marriages, marriages break, divorce, broken marriages. In some families, we find women always having a child, uh, the, the, the women never do proper marriage, they just have babies, they just carry babies about, no marriage. In some families. If you are here today, and your mother did not marry your father, and you are the product. <laughs> you need to pray. You need to pray so that their devils will not defeat you into doing what they did. In some families, uncontrollable anger. Hey, if they lose their temper, and it's all over the family, they lose their temper, they will, they will get mad, their bodies will be shaking and vibrating, they will, they will break things. A very top man in this country. Ran out of the house one night and started calling me on the phone. Say, Joe, 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 talk to madam, talk to madam. So, what's wrong? Say, madam has broken the windscreen of every car in the compound. So, I said, Give her the phone, give her the phone. Get woman the phone. Say, Madam, why are you breaking a windscreen? Say, The man is an idiot. In some families, is depression frustration and continuous financial difficulties in some families take today as a day when you will have to strike out with all the power that you have so that the good lord who has brought you to the mountain of fire will be able to deliver you from these strange powers that have mesmerized confused disgraced and has caused all kinds of trouble for people all over the place. Bottom line, your parents could put you in serious spiritual trouble. Bottom line, it is possible for you to be suffering from the consequences of the sins of your parents. Bottom line, the cup of iniquity that your parents have been drinking they can be sharing it with you bottom line until that cup of iniquity is full the following generation will still continue to suffer that is if you at your own end you cut it off and you don't even cut it off from your children they pick it up and it continues again bottom line Plenty of our parents have written promissory notes on our lives that we did not know when they were completely ignorant. And those promissory notes now is working against us. Bottom line, our ancestors can accept curses on our behalf. There was a case of insanity we dealt with some years back. Strange insanity. The insanity will not happen until there is examination to be done. The person is okay when there is no school exam. We do well in class, continuous assessment, A class, everything A class, but immediately a day to the examination, it is a day to the examination, it runs mad. After prayer, do you know what we found? We found that there was a king in their generation who also was mad. He used to run mad. He too would be normal. He would be mad. He would run normal. He would be normal. He would run mad. Then somebody say, we can't make a madman king go. So what do we do? 
The native doctor said, there's only one solution. Can we transfer the madness to your fourth generation? So that you can be king. He said, yes. So they transfer. So this man is the fourth generation. And the madness has now cut him up. I'm praying for someone here. Every dark river flowing from your father's house shall not touch your life. And if it has touched your life, I cut it off. In the name of Jesus. Bottom line. Forces from a person's background can ensure that the person always goes back to square one. Square one. Square one. Forces from a person's background can acquire a killer sword to slay the people in the family. That's why you would hear that some, some people, all of them perish, all of them go, perish, all of them go, whole family wiped off as a reason. We need to pray. We need to really, really pray. Disgrace can be the trademark of some families. Always disgrace out of power, disgrace out of this, disgrace out of that, disgrace out of this because of these devils that we need to fight. Therefore, in deliverance, listen carefully now. We are about to start praying very soon. In deliverance, there is something called ancestral powers. What did I say? Ancestral powers. That's the deliverance minister will call it ancestral powers for lack of a better name. Those ancestral powers are the powers that I call the devils that fought your father. The ancestral powers they go from family to family, from generation to generation. They are there to steal, to kill, and to destroy that family and to do all kinds of evil things. Whether you are the son of a pastor, whether you have believed for a long time, whether this, whether that, it does not really bother them. They deal with the person terribly. One of the other lessons I've learned in my life as a minister was many years back. A man of God above 70, he came for prayers. This man of God started to minister when he was 20 years old. He became a pastor at the age of 20. He was now above 70. As of the time he came to me, he had been a pastor for 50 years. He became a pastor before I was born. And he had pastored for 50 years. At the age of 70, this man fell into sin and he was caught sleeping with a 20 year old girl. 50 years. It was when he now came, we began to talk. We found that his father, his father had 14 wives. And that spirit had been hiding in the corner, looking at him, looking at him, looking at him, waiting for when it is the right period to attack. And then it will begin to attack. What do we do? You want to fight the devils of your father's house? The first thing to do is this. Well, you need to surrender your life to Jesus completely. Not mild surrender. A lot of people who claim to be born again are not born again yet. That's why some of their prayers are not answered. You need to surrender your life to Jesus. It is very, very important. If you don't do that, you cut yourself off from the flow of deliverance. Two, you need a deep and sincere confession of your sins. Deep and sincere confession of your sins. 
Three, you need to carry out a spiritual mapping of your family. That is, you need to sit down. Don't say I'm small. Sit down. Think about your daddy. Think about your mother. Look beyond them. Look at your uncles. Look at your aunties. Look at all of them. How well are they doing? Is any of them prospering? How well is this family doing? Is there anybody in this family who is doing well? Look at this. Look at it very well. So that you can know what to avoid. Carry out proper spiritual mapping. It may require you sitting down to prayerfully sit down and begin to say, Daddy, what, has, what did Daddy really achieve in life that I can point to? Mommy, are they properly married? All those things that I've told you today, something to check up so that you know what devils to fight. Three. Good. Now follow me then. Four. You need to break all generational curses and covenants. The curses that go from generation to generation. The curses that go from family to family. You need to break it. Five. You need to now pray prophetic prayers. You pray prophetic prayers. And that is the kind of prayer I want to introduce you to now. When ancestral powers or the devils of your father's house they are fighting you, you can sometimes know through the kind of dreams you are having. If you keep dreaming of the house where you grew up, you keep dreaming of your father's company, you keep dreaming of your family house, the Lord is telling you something. When these evil powers are fighting you, they sometimes appear in your dream as masquerades. They sometimes appear about strange people you don't know, but they seem to be familiar with you. They are the ones who ensure particular sicknesses continue, particular problems continue, particular situation that has mesmerized and confused the family is still continuing in the life of the person. They are the ones who make people unable to finish good projects. They start a good project, they can't finish. They produce the dropouts. They produce all kinds of people. They are in charge of mysterious hardship. People start a trade, they can't finish. Start a course, they can't finish. They start this, they can't finish. That finishing fever, that is, is their fault. Today, you must use me as an example and connect yourself to that current of God's flow to cut off any dark river that wants to flow into you or the one that is already operating. You need to cut it off. Rise up your feet now. All eyes closed. All eyes closed. We don't have too much time here today. And we have plenty of prayers to pray. So if you are here, say, Pastor, <laughs> I think I know what I'm going through now. I want to surrender my life to Jesus. Because of our time, I'm going to count 1 to 10 from here. If by the time I count 10 you are not here, it means you don't want to surrender your life to Jesus, so I leave you alone and we'll go on. But if you know today is your day, and you need to surrender your life to Jesus, before I count 10, make sure you are here so I can pray with you and we can do other things. So you say, Pastor, I'm here. I want to send my life to Jesus. I now see what the problem is. I want to defeat it. As I count now, just quickly run to the front here and surrender your life to Jesus. Don't waste time because we want to go and pray. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Amen. I see one person who is supposed to be here. 
I don't know why God brought you here, but it's for this purpose. You are supposed to be at the front here to surrender your life to Jesus. You know that you are not safe where you are. And you know that forces have been running after you. Because of you, I will start counting again to ten. If you are not here, well, I, your blood is not on my neck. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Those of you at the altar here, I must congratulate you. You've taken the most important decision in life, and you will see what will happen in your life. Just close your eyes. Say what I'm going to say after me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you now. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Take control of my life. As from today, I say bye-bye to the devil. I enter into the kingdom of light. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to pray with you now. Father, I commit to your children here who have come to surrender their lives to you unto your holy hands. Father, uphold them by your power in the name of Jesus. This decision you have made today shall be permanent in your lives. The Lord God that dwelleth in Zion shall bless you mightily. And no weapon formed against you shall prosper. The Lord will move you from strength to strength and from glory to glory. And today that you have taken this step, your days of unending laughter shall start. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Please open your eyes and look at me. I'm your friend, and I want to remain your friend. Please do me a favor. I want to be able to follow you up and be praying for you every day. So what you do, immediately we close this service. This is just a few minutes from now. Just find a way back here so that we can give you more assistance. God bless you. You may go back to your seat now. God bless us to do so. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Immediately we close the service. Please just find a way to the altar here so that we can pray more with you and give you more information. Make sure you fill our forms correctly so that we want to be praying for you by name. God bless you as you do so. Now listen to me very, very carefully. Some of the prayers I'd like you to pray today, some of you might still have to obtain this CD and replay the prayer by yourself at home. So you... But under the anointing that is present here now, I want you to pray this kind of prayers that people like us prayed many, many years back. Many, many years back. I'm talking about 1965. So, and it has helped us, and I'm sure it will help you. Can you close your eyes and let your voice roar like thunder? If you can still hear what the next person is saying, you have not started praying. If you pray this kind of prayer and you lose your voice, it is worth it. But if you keep quiet and you do not strike when the iron is hot, it will not be my fault. It will be your fault. If you don't deal with the devils that fought your father, they will finish you. They will, they will deal with you. And I don't want that to be your lot. I don't want that to be your lot. Open your eyes, look at me. I had a strange experience. There was this boy, 17 year old, and a woman of 40 something. I've forgotten the age now. So they came to my office. They said they wanted to see me many years back. When they got there, the woman turned to the son, 17, said, You talk. Turn, say, Mommy, you talk. You talk, you talk, you talk, you talk. Ah, you people are wasting my time. Some, one of you should talk. You talk, you talk, you talk. By the time they will talk, 
what they were going to tell me that they are pushing it to each other is that this boy has slept with his mother and his mother is now pregnant so they wanted to ask me whether to abort it I said you are asking the wrong pastor I felt like taking big stick to hit the woman on the head but I pulled back a little bit when the boy said sir we need help the same thing happened to my father sometimes men fight and struggle with forces they cannot master they cannot understand close your eyes now if the voice of the next person to you is louder then you are not praying you have not started praying you can see here the next person praying you have not started praying you are seeing me observing what is happening in your environment you have not started praying if you pray and you lose your voice and you defeat these powers you, you defeated them for good they won't ever trouble your life again but if you relax and you keep quiet and you say we well, have prayed this kind of prayer before well <laughs> i doubt whether you have prayed this kind of prayer before can you shout this loud and clear say that Fly inside my body. Death. In the name of Jesus. Basata Katana. Jesus. What is happening to that lady? You can feel some twitching, some twitching in your heart area. Something is happening to you. <laughs> That's right, yes. Your heart area is twitching already. It's vibrating. Somebody help that sister over there. Yes. Can you shout this again louder than anyone around you? Battles from my parents' blood walking against me. Come on, you shall take that. In the name of Jesus. That's right. In Jesus, then we pray. Uh, somebody over there, your stomach is in trouble now. There is, vo there is volcanic eruption in your stomach because of an evil breast that you suck when you were a baby. The evil milk that you drank when you were a baby. There is a volcanic eruption. In your tummy and at the count of seven that evil milk will begin to come out from your mouth you are going to vomit that milk out of your body but kapata ribo sanda one two three it's coming out it's coming out four five six seven Sir, power! That defeated my father! Power! That defeated my mother! I am not 
what's your candidate? Damn! In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Bapota Sapalika Tanda Kayaba. This is not a death on our shakes. We are not here to negotiate. Bakapota Satala Bakayaba. In Jesus' name we pray. <laughs> oh, yes. Silence. See what is happening now. I told you. See what is happening. Aha. Yes. The separation is happening. You see? They must separate from you. You are not the candidates. They must separate. They must separate from you. The serpent must go. The serpent must go. The serpent must go. Be separated. Be separated. Be separated from the serpent. Amen. We have to pray that prayer again. <laughs> we need to pray that prayer more seriously. You must turn your volume to the loudest. As we pray this prayer again, if you are that lady here, there is this spiritual man in your dream that is laying claim to you. See, he is your husband. You belong to her. Please run quickly to this altar and be on your knees now. As you pray this prayer, say, man, you see in your dream, laying claim to you, laying claim to you. Run quickly to this altar and be on your knees. Quickly, quickly, quickly. We don't have time. Everybody will shout it again. Power! That defeated my father! your candidate Damn! in the name of Jesus oh yes in the name of Jesus, move, 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 move. Aha, 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 aha. Yes, today is today. You must be released. Makatanda kaya boshanta na bosapana baka. Rima sapanda kaya boshanta na bosanta. Open your mouth, open your mouth, open your mouth, open your mouth, open your mouth. Thank you, Jesus. 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 In Jesus, then we pray. Yes, those of you at the altar, stretch your right hand to me. Here, yeah, those of you at the altar, your right hand, stretch it towards me. My purely Katenda Santa, Father, let your fire fall upon these hands now. Let these hands become the hands of breakthrough, the hands that will deliver you from the strange spirit of man, the hands that will deliver you from the strange education. In the name of Jesus, you are going to smite your head seven times. Those of you at the altar, get yourself ready. One, do it well, do it well. One, two, three, four, five, six, 
Jesus. Son! Every yoke of evil dedication against you. Every strange spirit laying claim to you. I command you to be delivered from their hand. In the name of Jesus. Beginning from today. Your life shall change. And every yoke of the oppressor upon your life. I break it now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. We go back to your seat rejoicing now. Thank you, Jesus. 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 As you pray this next prayer, if you are in this meeting, you know, nobody needs to tell you, that in your family, women always suffer. Your mother suffered. And women that you can see that have, that have gotten married, they never enjoy that marriage. They always suffer. Find a way quickly to this altar and be on your knees. Everybody will shout this loud and clear. Loud and clear. Makatenda, setenda. This is not a day to negotiate. This is not a day to joke. This is a day for serious battle here. Serious battle here. Say, bad family history. Bad family history. Can you shout his love? Bad In the name of Jesus. Then we pray. Father, I use your children here as a point of contact for the different families they represent. That beginning from today, every yoke of marital turbulence break in the name of Jesus. Not only that, any power that wants you to repeat any evil history. I destroy the power in the name of Jesus. Now, this particular prayer, a prayer that we've been praying for, that people like us have been praying for years, for years, for years, for years, for years, for years, for years. Say, anointing. To break, out. to break out from evil family bondage, evil family bondage. fall upon me. How many want that anointing? Can I see you shouting it? Uh -huh. Shout it again! Jesus, open your mouth and begin to pray. 